Hello and welcome back everybody. It's complicated relationships with its stories. Hope you guys are safe and healthy. Now let's see what the story is about today. What would you do if you find out your wife is hanging out with another man, goes on dates and even brings him home while you are out of state for work? Would you ever be able to forgive her? Well guys, stick around. Let's find out all about it in today's story. Also, if you like what I do, please give this video a thumbs up and do subscribe to the channel. Maya So and I have been happily married since 2005. We have no kids, we both work and are truly agreeable throughout everyday life. We have buckled down on our professions and upheld each other the entire time. She came from a clique-like church and brought up in the purity culture. At some point in 2016 or 2017, she began to question the congregation and its perilous evangelical connections to legislative issues. In 2019, she met her AP at a memorial service and she requested his number. Two or three weeks later, I started to see she was messaging much more while we sat close to one another in bed. I asked her twice in the event that another person was included or if something was going on. I suspected something passionate. OP left for about five weeks for some out-of-state brief work. During that time, she would welcome him over to hang out as friends and go on dates. The entirety of this occurrence, without my assent or information, she would allow him to remain in the house so he wouldn't hazard getting a DUI since they had a few drinks. Evidently, he would drink a great deal. Awfully adapting abilities on his part. Also, mind you, the greater part of the subtleties I got were not from her but rather from the AP face to face. Eventually, she would go along with him on the couch and it got... Before adequately long, she would carry him upstairs to the extra room and they slept together, so the house is defiled by their activities. This is his confession, by the way. I flew her down to where I was working so we could drive together back to our home. When I initiated intimacy, she was like a limp ragdoll and totally not into it. I knew that she was hiding something, possibly an affair. I was in denial partly because she was a virgin when we married and was involved with the church. Plus, I already challenged her twice and she said no. I felt horrible after each questioning and I simply went against my instincts. After OP came back home, she was not the same. Her relationship with the other man continued and she would visit him when OP was gone for work. She eventually became cold and distant to me. She wouldn't sleep with me nor be affectionate. She was crying and very depressed. Apparently, she started to see him at his place and he didn't want her to get attached. He dropped an ultimatum. You divorce him or no with me. I think she knew she was about to lose both worlds. She found safety, acceptance, no shame from sexuality, and no judgment from the AP. None of these things she ever explained to me until after her confession. I think she wanted the stability, real love, and a real future with me, but also wanted the full acceptance and understanding from the AP. It was two worlds she had to pick from, and that's why she was severely depressed. I believe she realized she didn't have a real future with him because he was unstable, but she didn't know if I would just outright divorce her with zero possibility of reconciliation. The wife did confess to OP after he had deep suspicions for a good four months. I know she tried to undo the damage she caused before the confession by dressing the way I liked her to dress, wear her hair long, start to help with yard work, come to the gym with me, and be my friend again. When she confessed, I was devastated, despite me knowing what she was about to say. I told her I can forgive her and allow reconciliation if she cuts off all ties with her AP. She said she couldn't promise that. I honestly couldn't figure out why she would say that, despite the olive branch of peace I was offering. I became numb, disconnected, and was experiencing shock from the emotional trauma. OP truly had a lot of bad thoughts in his mind, and that's when he realized he had to get away from her. I walked out and went to the park. I called my great friend at 3.45 a.m. and he answered the phone. He told me that if he knew I was calling at 3.45 a.m. that something bad was happening. We talked for an hour and he came over and got my guns for my safety. My wife asked me later that morning to please not make any long-term decisions while I was emotional. I definitely wanted to divorce her and leave her with absolutely nothing. She had been going to therapy shortly after the ultimatum by her AP and had been reading books on how to soothe the betrayed spouse. 
She gave me time alone, she communicated her sorrow, and expressed shame and guilt for what she did. After four days away, I came home and began dating her again. We started to have some hot and beautiful intimacy. For some reason, I wanted lots of it. Now, they started to see a marriage counselor together. I went to a therapist for PTSD because of the betrayal. I also joined an online discussion group for betrayed spouses. With the counselor, she agreed to cut off all communications with the AP. I'm doing much better now after seven months. Together, we learned that she was dealing with emotional trauma from the purity culture. Cultural norms and expectations, women are supposed to have babies, not careers, and only hetero couples are acceptable. I have created a safe place for her to express those concerns and to feel accepted. I want to share my personal experience as the betrayed husband. Immediately after the confession, I experienced shock and numbness. Things were in slow motion while my mind raced. My heart rate was very fast and I had dry mouth. I was experiencing the fight-or-flight response. I was angry, yet I wanted to forgive. I couldn't sleep very well for several days. I lost my appetite and dropped about 15 pounds in one month. My mind just couldn't think of anything but the affair. My mind created the visual scene. Anytime I got new details or I discovered new things about the affair, it was a new shockwave through my body and a setback in the recovery. I developed insomnia for at least 10 days. OP lost his job because of this. His recovery was painful and was a very slow process. I couldn't enjoy life or old hobbies. I was hypersensitive to noise, motion, and light when trying to sleep. When I listened to music before the affair, I didn't really pay attention to the lyrics, mostly the beat. After the affair, lyrics became crystal clear. Any music or shows about affairs became triggers. I was constantly fighting intrusive thoughts that caused me to spiral into a shutdown or emotional breakdown. I cried a lot and was suffering from severe depression. The first month or so was very difficult and nearly broke me. No, it did break my spirit. The advice I give to the betrayed is this. Focus on your healing. How? Surround yourself with people who support you and love you. People who will let you rant and verbally process, and you will do a lot of it. If you need to leave the home, find someone who will offer you safety. If you need to take a week away from work, do it. Get scheduled for counseling. Understand that you are very unstable and need a lot of time before you can make rational decisions. Make choices without overwhelming emotional bias. Do not try to control your unfaithful spouse and their healing. You need to focus on you. It took OP several weeks before he felt he could go on social media without blasting his wife publicly and exposing her to her family, co-workers, neighbors, and the church. Just don't do it. You may be tempted to have a revenge affair. Don't do it. Don't expect your WS healing to be like yours. My WS was already going to therapy and reading books, so she had a lead. One of the best things to help me was going to counseling, having trusted friends to dump my feelings on, and having a safe place to be. Through slow but steady healing, my wife and I are in a much better place. It's been seven months since D-Day, and I don't have intrusive thoughts every minute. I may have them once or twice a day, and I can recognize them. I recognize when I'm about to spiral out of control emotionally, but I use cognitive processing therapy techniques and pull myself out of it. My wife and I are having wonderful intimacy and doing so much better. I still have moments of resentfulness, but I let myself feel and process it. It's okay to have anger and resentfulness. It's okay to wonder if you should stay or go. It's okay to wonder if the marriage will ever be the same. Now, OP says the old marriage is gone. It's a new husband and a wife in a new relationship. And yes, I have every right to forgive, reconcile, rebuild the friendship, and then simply say, I am divorcing you. I know at the time of confession, I needed her. Now, I don't need her, I just want her. I choose to stay in this marriage, but reserve the right to walk away, and don't have to stay. Why am I staying? I see her hard work in therapy and being there for me. We have talked and processed what was missing in our relationship. What was missing? Our inability to open up emotionally to each other. Yes, we had a strong love for each other, but we didn't make ourselves vulnerable to each other to allow confessions of the most shameful type. We just didn't know how. We both had emotionally distant parents. I was an avoidant type, I think, and simply kept things to myself. 
The wife found someone who helped her feel safe with her vulnerabilities and OP now knows to create a safe place she needs and vice versa. Culturally, the stereotypical male would say I should leave her because she's tainted or a tramp, despite only having been with two men her whole life. People make mistakes and I have forgiven her. Our love is much stronger and our communication is so much better. Our intimacy has become so much more frequent and I love how she pursues me. Yes, forgiveness is possible. Yes, the marriage can become stronger. Yes, the WS can learn from the mistake. It takes a lot of work for both of you. We will reach our 15th year of marriage shortly. Yes, the affair went on during our anniversary and her birthday. It actually went on for almost six months. Are certain holidays and anniversaries overshadowed with pain? Yes, absolutely. Will it go away? Honestly, I don't know, but I am hopeful. It helps to recognize the emotions I am experiencing and the racing thoughts in my mind. I process them to understand why they are there and what triggered them. Finally, this is the message OP wants to give you all. Hang in there and know that it is possible to recover from this, with or without your SO. You must take care of yourself first. Do not try to control your SO. Don't do it alone. Get help. Thank you all for listening. Please like, comment and share the video if you enjoyed it. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when we upload the next video. Take care.